The Sharp Edge on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Mazek Seeds. Bernard Tobin here on realagriculture.com. Today we're going to kick off a new series and I'm going to be co-hosting with Greg Stewart. Greg, how's it going? Hey, good to be with you today. Awesome. So, hey, let's talk about the Sharp Edge, the new series. Tell everybody about it. Who are they going to see? What are they going to learn? Well, we're going to look for stuff that's uh, that's at the edge. You know, trying to overcome a problem, trying to make more profitability, trying to improve sustainability. We're going to talk to farmers. We're going to talk to agronomists. We're going to talk to researchers, and we're going to look for that sharp edge. Talk about our first guest. Why did you choose him to kick it off? So Tony Balkwell has a farm and runs a research uh, company, Nithfield uh, Agronomy and Research, not too far from Drumbo. Mm -hmm. And uh, I worked with Tony uh, when I was with the government and uh, continue to have a good relationship now that I'm working with Mazex. Uh, Tony has a nice blend of uh, practical, can fix your tractor, make your GPS talk, but also wants to bring in the research side of it at the same time. And today we're gonna to focus on strip till. Yeah, I love strip till and strip till is a nice marriage for Tony where he brings precision ag and strip till uh, together. Awesome, here's Tony Balkwell. In the world of strip till, Tony, some guys do it to improve yields over no-till. Some guys do it to improve planting timeliness. Others worry about more about fertilizer efficiency. Where do you sit in trying to prioritize uh, strip till in your operation and with your research? I think uh, initially we thought there was probably some benefit to be more efficient in soil preparation, but our biggest benefit has come from fertilizer efficiency use. So currently we cut our fertilizer rates about 20%. Uh, dry fertilizer using a strip-till system. So in your operation, well, particularly in your home farm, are you fall versus spring, shank versus coulter? Where do you land in that discussion? Well, we've had two kind of discuss or two kind of uh, areas of experience in that, both the shank and the coulter. Uh, we've shifted to the coulter and spring simply because we do have a lighter soil type. So we focus on spring coulter type strip tillage right now. And we find with that system, we can apply nitrogen with it in the spring. Um, I do see a fit for fall strip till in other soils, heavier soils that can benefit from that fall application and that exposed soil that then can be freshened up in the spring and, and ultimately get on the field a little bit more timely. So you've been doing lots of work over the years on precision ag. Do you see a particularly good marriage between precision ag and strip till, especially if you compare it to, say, variable rate broadcasting. Yeah, because because we find with our uh, strip till systems, we're able to variable rate our fertility uh, directly by soil type. So we're moving our fertilizer rates up and down 25, maybe even 30 percent, depending on the soil type. And there's an economic return there, both on the cost savings, but more in the yield increase that we're getting just from focusing our fertilizer within the root of that corn plant versus a broadcast where uh, in the past it's we've found has been highly inefficient even with a variable rate application. So if you spoke particularly to phosphorus you'd say you've got way more chance of succeeding doing variable rate phosphorus in a strip till system relative to your uh, a broadcast approach? Absolutely we find phosphate is super more is highly more efficient within a band within the within the strip itself especially in our sandier soils. Um, we can cut the rate of that phosphate and still see a good response to those rates. So it's almost a standard practice now here. We don't broadcast any pee at any point. Okay, Tony, we're at the working end of your rig here now. Could you talk to us a little bit about a typical field and what sort of uh, rates and blends you would use in this strip till operation? So uh, currently we double band on each side of the seed. We're about three inches below and three inches down on each side. And with that, then we're running about an average rate of about 400 pounds per acre. And that blend, just from an analysis point of view, is usually a 60, 40, 40. Uh, and then we would put about 35 sulfur, six to eight mag, and about three pounds of zinc within that. And then that'll range based on the prescription of about 100 pounds up and down. Right, so 60 pounds of N is your total N being delivered 
through your spring strip till operation. Yeah. Do you worry about, so that's a fair bit of fertilizer. I mean, the N is 60, but you talked about 40 pounds of K going in that as well. Do you worry about uh, keeping the seeds safe in a, in a spring strip till operation? Yeah, absolutely. And it's more important to, to concentrate, we found on the recipe of the ingredients of the fertility blend, not necessarily the analysis. So within that 60 pounds of nitrogen, a large portion of that is coated urea. So we mitigate a lot of salt injury risk with that uh, right off the bat. Um, and the other is just compatibility of all the products so it flows and blends. But uh, salt indexes and, and risk of burn is paramount and that's kind of why we're at that rate right now with the, um, you know, a max rate and we feel it's pretty safe, especially when it's dispersed across two bands versus a single band. Uh, if you were in a shank design, that's a little risky because you're focusing it all in one area versus spreading it around the zone a little bit. Does it actually end up as a band, Tony, or do you get it diffused throughout the zone? What's your, what's your feeling on how tight it stays? It's definitely not near the seed. It is more concentrated outside of the seed, but it is mixed up within that kind of three inch by three inch on each side. But that's, you know, it does mix up pretty good through, especially with the speed that we're going at. So you, you're bringing 40 pounds of K in a typical operation, you're bringing 40 pounds of K. Uh, would you consider, you know, moving, if that's not enough potash for you, what would you do if you, if you didn't want to make your zone any hotter and your K levels had slipped a bit? Would you, would you go to broadcast fall or, or spring or where would you take your additional K requirements? Our foundation for K management is still broadcast variable rate. Uh, so we do find K is a lot more efficient within a broadcast than phosphate that we talked about earlier. So we do cut as much K as we can out of the blend to just keep cutting that salt risk down. And then we'll steer it into more of a broadcast level. And we find with K as we constantly need to have our soil exchanging and, and free K available. And we don't quite get that with the band within that year. So we always try to keep our K levels sufficient across all farms. And then we just put a bit more with the, the planter just to help uh, alleviate the volumes that we have to broadcast. And, and that would be fall broadcast K, spring broadcast K, or do you care? It's post-harvest broadcast K. Okay. So we're, we're, reply, we're reapplying a lot of our potash based on our crop removal. Math. So you've killed broadcast phosphorus, yes. right? And leaving phosphorus management all in the strip till, but you're, you're actually working on K management through broadcast variable rate. Yes, and K, and K and Lime is our two big broadcast by soil type systems and everything else is managed through this machine here now. So you've got the planter attached right to the back of the strip tiller. Is that always the way it runs? Do you ever do strip tilling and then plant later or is it always a single pass strip till and put the seed in right behind you? We do some single pass less and less. Um, this particular uh, machine is kind of an experimental research machine so it's flexible to do a lot of different applications. A general practice, our farmer practice, if you will, would be a spring strip till with this. And then within few, a few days or even within half a day, we'll come back in with the planter on top of that strip once the uh, moisture and once the tackiness is out of the strip, and then we'll plant on top of that. So nothing ever works perfectly. Uh, what in your mind is something you'd, you'd still need to dig into, answer, figure out in this whole strip till precision ag uh, world? Where, where, do you, where do you see the next thing you really would like to to check off? Probably one of the biggest challenges with this machine and clients and other growers is we are seeing some benefits of variable rate application, but when we make a blend, we really restrict because we've mixed all these nutrients together versus having a bin where we could maybe separate our nitrogens from our phosphate and do prescriptions specifically to those elements instead of having it all mixed up. So I think we could hone it in a little better, both economically and probably get a little more yield out of that if we could fine tune each product. So there you have it. Greg, some great messages on, on nutrient management. Yeah, so I really like uh, Tony's approach where he's moving phosphorus into the strip till and making precision ag work with the phosphorus, right? Because I think we've all learned that trying to broadcast, even in a precision uh, scripted world, trying to broadcast phosphorus isn't going to take us anywhere but then he still sticks to the idea that his potash management can be broadcasted but he'll bring precision ag into those k applications so that's a that's a nice sort of evaluating the system let's put phosphorus precision ag management in the strip and take potash and put it in a precision ag but we can broadcast it that's that's a nice approach and not a lot of tillage on this farm 
So he's on some lighter ground here in this part of the world. And really, he's making it all work with a pass of a strip tiller in the spring ahead of the corn planter. Awesome. Hey, first episode of The Sharp Edge. We'll see you back in a couple of weeks for another one. Looking forward to it. Thank you.